Hi there, Henry from Nolan Virgin, Porsche people in Uxbridge. Welcome to another video. Third Wednesday of the month, which means we're here at the Fair Mile in Cobham in Surrey for the 911 UK Porsche meet. So normally we bring something a bit special to the meet and I talked to you about it. I'm actually in the truck today, um, but what a good little truck this is. Porsche KN, to many people, it's just the very worst thing Porsche have ever produced. Um, you know, SUVs, they should never produce them. They should produce little lightweight sports cars. Um, but the reality is that actually kind of more of these are sold than, than 911s in terms of, if you look at KNs and McCann's these days, um, they're, they're sold in much bigger volume than a, a, a Porsche 911. We've had uh, KNs since they came out in 2003. Um, and I don't think we've ever been without one. Um, and they are an absolutely fantastic bit of kit. And I think they still have the, 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 the sort of Porsche ethos, if you will. So this is a 2012, 2013 KN GTS. Um, to call it a, a, a sort of lightweight, more nimble SUV is, it's still heavy, but um, between this and the previous model GTS we had, I think they shaved about 160 kilos out of it um, with a combination of a few, I think, aluminium panels and also the drivetrain, the gearbox they, they changed. Um, uh, you don't have a high and low ratio box on them anymore. You've got an eight speed uh, gearbox in this. So it has more kind of ratios within the, 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 the single, uh, more yeah, ratios within the, the single, um, boxer so you haven't got a low and a high speed box in it um, it's a it's a big V8 engine um, 4.8 litres they're about 400 and crikey I think 20 horsepower 0 to 60 under 6 seconds I think it's probably 5.5 5.6 seconds so they're quite a capable car but lovely to handle um, you know in terms of it, it although it's a, a big car it doesn't feel like it's a big heavy weight it's actually a, a, a really as I say quite a nimble car and I think the Porsche ethos runs through if you compare this to something like a Range Rover um, I always think that fundamentally without the electronics this car is quite a, a good stable car um, whereas something like the Range Rover it's almost trying to kill you and, and, and the electronics are kind of then keep you alive again but I think fundamentally um, you know it's a fairly decent car in terms of its handling and so on um, you know and then the electronics only go to to, to, to to help out there's a few bits on these that I like and I wouldn't have a, a cane without the air suspension um, I think on these is, is a really great bit of kit uh, means you can raise and lower the car um, so if you want to you can keep the, the center of gravity a bit lower down when you're driving it um, if it's a steel sprung car you have to sort of take a compromise so given that they'll go off road it's probably got to be a bit higher than it would ideally be if you're driving down the motorway and so on if you see dust coming across we're not on fire it's just that some cars are still coming in and we're going over they're coming over a really dusty part of the of the field that we're in so uh, yeah getting covered in dust but anyway ignore that um so yeah it's it, it's you know we use it um we also tow with this as well you'll see it's got a tow bar on the back um, and so it tows other Porsches on a trailer and it tows really really well um, so as a tow car they're brilliant all-round car lovely so we're off um, to do a bit of work with our other business which is Charter Solent we, we've got some charters on, on the boat so we've got to run down and provision for the, for the charter tomorrow so uh, I say we're on the route so we're, we're kind of in the truck loaded full of gear and stuff but great car uh, and uh, yeah big big uh, big KN fan so uh, so yeah um, as always I'll have a little walk round and uh, we'll see what else is out there and uh, come and have a walk around with us so this is interesting we've parked next to it Porsche Taycan just as I said that the KN for many people would be you know shock horror should never have produced them um, of course the Taycan is a electric vehicle it's all electric uh, and there will be people who equally say my goodness me Porsche should never get involved in electric cars I must be honest um, I'm not a massive electric vehicle fan I don't really get involved with them and, and I'll tell you for why to me I got into Porsches because um, 
you, know, you could buy back in the day a Porsche 911. They were always worth £10,000. You never had to scrap them. You'd have a, a like a Renault 25. It's a 1500 pound car, or it was at the time. Little electronic box on the gearbox packed up. Um, the box was 13, 1400 pounds. So you scrapped a perfectly good car for one component. Whereas with the 911, because they were worth 10,000 um, pounds, you know, you could, there was enough room in it to, 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 to mend them and to, to keep them on the road. The problem I have with something like this is, I don't see this as being a, a 40 year old car in the future. I suspect that once the battery dies a death, the car will be scrapped because it will be too expensive to, to replace the battery on a car that hasn't got a high enough intrinsic value. So I, I struggle a little bit because I like to have stuff, you know, we sell cars uh, old that are maybe 40 years old um, and then everything between then and, and relatively new. But, but I don't think these, you, know, you will see classic Taycans in the future. However, I had a chat with the owner of this and it was interesting that he'd actually come out of a Tesla uh, into this and it was interesting chatting to him and I think the the Porsche ethos is still there in terms of it's a better built car than the Tesla the handling is is you know it, Porsche is still concentrating on how the how the car handles and and you know what it is as a driver's car and so on so you know within the realm of, of, of EVs I think that the Taycan is is probably you know quite a quite a, a good car there's certainly plenty of them on the road um, so uh, so yeah it's interesting that we're sort of parked next to, to it and almost the two pariahs the KN and the, uh, the the Taycan the EVs you know kind of next to each other but you know they've both played a, a very important role in, in, in Porsche's history and their financial success so you know in that sense you know we need them but even if you drive a you know a, a more lightweight 911 you can only do that because of the success of, of stuff like this, the KN and the, and the Taycan. So, you know, don't knock them too hard. And so we're actually, we've, we've moved one car that way was the Taycan and one car this way of the KN is this little 964. Um, as you know, I love my 964s. Um, we've got the RS, which we're, we're rebuilding and which over the winter we'll do some more videos on. Um, reason I've, I've, I've sort of singled this out this isn't a slightly interesting car it's an f so it's going to be an 89 car and it's a c4 and when these first came out they actually launched them in the the four-wheel drive version before they did the two-wheel drive so the c4 came out a little bit before the c2 and so uh, one of an earlier uh, 964s but uh, you know quite a big sort of line in the sand in the 911 development. The 3.2 which preceded it, you can go kind of right back to 63. Um, and then the, the, the 964, um, the changes they made to, to the 964, um, you can almost carry forward to almost current day. But, I, but it was a really, really big change. Although these look a little bit like a, a 3.2 Carrera, um, under the skin, very different car. This is a, a, a another interesting car. Uh, 944 turbo no please be in the background uh, so uh, 944 turbo cabriolet they did the turbo cabriolet the s2 cabriolet very similar cars back in the day we used to sell loads of these and actually you don't see that many of them on the road these days um, but in its day like classic like 1980s Porsche the lovely flared arches of, of the 944 um, and then a really neat arrangement with the roof so electronic roof that went down electric roof that went down um, but yeah back in the day we used to sell the S2 version of this it was a 15,000 pound car people couldn't afford to insure their Sierra Cosworth so they'd pass exchange a Sierra Cosworth in at three and a half grand um, and uh, you'd sell them a 944 S2 at, at, at 15,000 pounds uh, but now, as I say, you know, you, you don't see sort of that many, but still a really, really good looking car. I think it's a, it's a really neat package. Very hard to make a convertible that, that actually works as, you know, with, that doesn't look ungainly with the roof up or down. But these are, these are quite a nice car, you know, with the roof up, they're, 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 they're quite pleasant. But this, I say in turbo form, uh, they, did, they did a normally aspirated S2 and then the turbo, but um, you know, good car and you don't see many of them around anymore, so nice to see one. So this, actually this is a car we've sold ourselves actually this one, um, but again chatting to the owner and 
it's a kind of seminal you know this is the kind of the middle of the if you draw a line this and uh, sort of i think that these three two carreras are well for me it's where they all started as a kid this was the the car you kind of saw uh, the poster car that the the, the the carrera you know well tell on the back just come around the front chairs let's i don't know if you can catch the the front and i think also when you're driving these so the 964 the c4 um which uh we 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 talked about earlier that was the first of the the, the 964s the c4 but these you know when you drive them these kind of the wings that stick up it's a really anyone who's owned a, a 911 you know a, a pre sort of uh, 89 will will instantly know the feeling of you kind of see the you know the the, the wings there the headlights the um it's just such a, 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 a sort of evocative car when you drive them you kind of i remember the first one i ever owned you kind of put in fuel in the front which was weird the these these kind of wings and headlights sticking up here was weird the engine was in the back which was weird you know and somehow it all works and yet now we've sold so many of them that it just becomes sort of the norm really which is you know but uh, but yeah this is a this is a say a nice you know good uh sort of jobbing three two career a nice thing Right, it's rare that you get two incredibly handsome men in the same video, but ladies, little treat for you. Um, right, so I often say that it's we come to the uh, show here, it's not a UK show. This is the man behind the show. You'll have to forgive the fact I'm showing the microphone. Would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Good evening, Mr. Furman. How are you doing? I won't hold it then. That's right. Okay, right, so uh, my name is Sandeep, and I've been running uh, the 911 UK website for the best part of 20 or so years and we've been at the Fairmile for the last 18. Often found on Instagram at Porsche 911 UK. Bit of advertising. Bit of advertising. So we're here on the third Wednesday of every summer month, April to September. So this is the last meeting of this year? This is the very last one of the yeah. year. And again, we've, we've been lucky with the beautiful weather we've had yeah. today. Another great selection of cars. So I always say to people, I, I, I don't go to many shows because when you buy and sell them and you work on them every day the last thing you want to do is go out and see cars I like the fact that this show is a very eclectic mix of cars um, so in terms of, of kind of how, how has it evolved how have you created it what's how's it come to be I think the, the biggest change is post Covid where there was an opportunity to organize it better and plan out the logistics of how we park the cars and promote it on social media which has really grown in the, sort of the last so five how, years. So how many cars have we had here today, do you think? So today we're already at 200 plus, okay. um, which is you know, a regular attendance. Yeah. But obviously one of the things you might have noticed every month is they're parked in a different arrangement. We use we have different themes. Uh, so we try and make sure when you come back to the fair mile, it's always going to be different. But, you, but there's, it's always interesting, you know, there's a, everything from a, a 356 here to a you know GT3 RS Visac here and everything in the middle so it's a really eclectic group isn't it yeah it's you know it's I think the key thing is you have a Porsche yeah so whether it's a you know the latest Taycan or the oldest 356 then come on down and it's not it's not a sort of cliquey group you you find everyone breaks bread together no matter what part of the Porsche family that, that they're into well I, I wouldn't call myself Jesus just yet but, uh, <laughs> but uh, the wine maybe for later yeah <laughs> okay but it's so how long is it 10 years it's been going this no, year no, 18 uh, what how what the meetings been going 18 years, 18 years yeah. have they really okay yeah. and have they always uh, held been held here at the fair mile yeah so it's it's always been the, the days are sometimes changed over the years but it's always been the third Wednesday April through to uh, September because we're limited by the light. Yeah, and it's also worth saying it's free to attend. There's no charge. You turn up in a Porsche, park up, no charge. Yeah, there's no charge if you come in a Porsche. And uh, what is your hope for the future in terms of the show? My hope for the future? Well, I, I think it's just to continue what we've done to bring together a great group of enthusiasts yeah. with all their cars. And, you know, we can talk cars, you know, we can. We can, I can work on my... The official count is 201 over. There you go. The official count is 201. Thanks, Harry. Cheers.
Ah. And you know he's important because he's got a two-way radio and the tabard of power. And the tabard so, of power, yeah. yeah. I, I'm the only one in yellow, just so they know which one. Are you really? OK. So they, so, can, they can spot me. OK, so the orange people aren't as important. We have different roles to perform in terms of where we are positioned okay. and how we get the cars in. But one of the things we always do is we mix up the parking. We've had you know GT themes, air-cooled themes, yeah. coloured themes, which was incredibly difficult. But it's that like, was well, last last month was coloured, wasn't it? That was last month. And I saw the aerial footage. Bob from uh, the body shop, his son, did a little aerial shot. Absolutely fantastic shot. You did really well. There was nothing out of place except for that funny multicoloured. Uh, was it a nine? That 914. 914, which you didn't know where to put it. But other than that, that, that was, I think, in terms of unlocking a level of parking difficulty, that was actually a lot harder than it actually was. Was it? Yeah, it was quite stressful. Um, but it's you know it's part of the law where um, you know it's six times a year. Yeah. You know whether you come once, twice, or even yeah. six times, yeah, yeah. it's always going to be different. So like you said, you know, we're here next to a, a lovely sapphire blue 991.2. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Carrera GTS, yeah, uh, and uh, you know, over there we've got a GT3 RS, and next to it, you know, we've got a classic 3.2. Yeah. For me, I quite like it's like a walk through memory lane very often. There's a, a little 924 Le Mans uh, at the front there, which you know, I remember them from period, you know, an 89 94 Le Mans was you know, we were selling them not long after that. Um, and so it's really nice to see stuff like that. It's great, and today's theme has been. 94s, 944s, something that isn't necessarily seen in prominence in previous meets. Yeah, yeah. But also, what we also have got down the middle is it's GT cars and turbos. Yeah. Um, and it's you know it's kind of worked out. Yeah. But we're always trying to uh, vary the theme month to month. Yeah. Well, there you go. I just thought I'd catch him. He's the busiest man here. He's always organising and running around. But I just wanted to introduce and to sort of say hello. So uh, even, there you go. Even McCanns are here as well. And even KNs. Even, even KNs. You even allowed us in on a KN truck. There, w- there was one train KN truck that came through. Yes, we one came in. Oh, there you go. There anyway, you go. it's been a lovely show again. So well done. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Always That's good. That's right. Always good to see you. Cheers. Look after you. Thank you. We saw the 944 Turbo Cabriolet. This would be its kind of little sibling, um, the 924. So, um, as everyone knows, it was you know designed by by Audi, and then Porsche took over the project, and and it then spurred the the 944. This is a, a, a another quite a rare little car. I've sold a couple of these over the years. Uh, 924 Le Mans, so I think I'm right in saying it'd be a 1989 car. Um, and uh, you can see the distinctive decals and so on, and the interior. Um, and this is actually a really, I'm just looking at it now, really uh, good condition car. The interior looks looks spectacular on it. Um, so yeah, this is a this is quite a, a sort of rare car. And uh, no, it's it's at the time it was a kind of more affordable Porsche. Um, and you know when you compare it to some of the exotic other gt the gt3 rs's it you know wouldn't be able to sort of hold a candle in terms of performance but still you know from an ownership point of view as i've, I've said in a previous video my well first ever actual porsche was my mocha black i.e brown automatic 924 and you know i loved it and so something like this you know it's this is a a, a lovely lovely little car and as i say nice to sort of bring out on a weekend and have a bit of fun in so so really nice GT4, um, good cars, Cayman, so based on the Cayman, the kind of GT, or Cayman's GT, answered to a GT3, I guess, so, uh, but still really, really uh, capable car. This particular car, I actually know the owner, uh, so we have a boat charter business on the south coast, Charter Solent, and this is actually Captain Ramos's car, so he has a, another uh, boat charter business on the south coast, uh, and so we see him out on the water, and then we see him at the Porsche meets as well, so, uh, so yeah. Um, but great little cars. This is a like the granddaddy of, of, of cars in terms of um, GT3 is a nice bit of kit, driver's car. The GT3 RS, it takes it to a next level and uh, is, is closer to the kind of cup car into, you know, the, a pure race car. And then the Vysak version um, takes it sort of one step beyond. So GT3 RS Vysak. Um, very very capable car chatted to the owner of this quite interesting um, nice to see a car that gets used we were sort of chatting about you know values and, and, and actually you know it's someone who bought the car because he wants the car uses it 
uh, and it, it's, it's really good to see it out. She's been on a bit of a tour of Europe, I think. So, uh, but yeah, I love seeing stuff like this getting used on the road. So nice to see. So the light is fading. So we're kind of running out of, of daylight, really. So uh, I'm probably going to have to say that's it. Um, it's been a really good season uh, this year. We, we, we've done had some good meets here. This is probably going to be the uh, the last meeting this year. Um, third Wednesday of every month in the summer, uh, and we, we've had some 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 good uh, meets, uh, interesting cars, interesting people, uh, and I always look forward to the to the fair mile uh, meetings. You know, it's very informal. Uh, and just really nice and, and sort of speak to a few people, see some customers, see some people you know, see some inter interesting cars. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good show. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, we're probably now gonna be uh, drawing a line on this show and it'll be next year uh, when, uh, when it starts up again. If you go on the 911 UK forum, uh, that uh, will give you all the information you need to know about it. Uh, and yeah, but in the meantime, I'm Henry, we're 911 Virgin, the Porsche people of Uxbridge. Thanks for watching, look after yourselves, have fun.